In this video, we're going to look at the dot product of two vectors and the orthogonal projection of a vector. The dot product. Given two vectors v and w, the dot product is denoted with a little dot between them. It's calculated by looking at the product of the x components plus the product of the y components. Notice that what we get back will be a scalar, a number. For this reason, it is sometimes referred to as a scalar product. For example, if we have the vector v with, with components 3, 4, and the vector w with components 1, negative 2, then the dot product of v and w would be calculated as 3 times 1, the product of the x components, plus 4 times negative 2, the product of the y components, and then we would add this together and we would get back negative 5. Some of the properties of the dot product that we want to be familiar with are the commutative property, which says that v dotted with w is the same as w dotted with v. The order that we dot the two vectors does not matter or the distributive property. If we have a vector u being dotted with the sum of two vectors, we can distribute the dot product of u to each of the inside vectors. Or there's the scalar property that says if you have a scalar times a dot product, that we can distribute the scalar to either the first vector or the second vector, but not both. There's also a relationship to the magnitude of a vector, that a vector dotted with itself is always going to be equal to the magnitude of that vector squared. Now let's look at a geometric interpretation of the dot product. If v and w are two non-zero vectors and theta is the angle between v and w, then the dot product of v and w can also be calculated by looking at the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w times the cosine of the angle theta. In many problems, we're interested in finding this angle, so we'll solve for the cosine of theta by dividing by the magnitudes. The way to think of this formula is that the right hand side is really the multiplication of three scalars, three numbers so we can change the order of multiplication and write it as magnitude of v cosine of theta times the magnitude of w. The first part of this multiplication, the magnitude of v cosine of theta, the way to think of this is that it's the length of the component of v that goes in the same as or the same direction as w. So that this dot product is really the length of the component of v times the length of w. To see this, we observe that if there's an angle theta between v and w, we can drop a line straight down from v to w to make a right triangle. For now, let's call this length of the side of the triangle a, so that we have the cosine of theta can be written as this adjacent side a divided by the hypotenuse of our triangle which we know is the magnitude of v so that a can be written as the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta it's the length of that component of v that moves in the same direction as w Let's look at a couple particularly important examples when the angle between our two vectors are maybe zero degrees or zero radians. If the angle is zero, then we know that the cosine of zero is one, so the dot product results in just being the multiplication of these two magnitudes. If the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees, if they're orthogonal, then we know the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, so the dot product of v and w would just be 0.
Note that this is only going to happen if the two vectors are orthogonal, if they're at a 90 degree angle to each other. And lastly, let's consider if our two vectors are pointing in opposite directions. Then the angle between them would be pi or 180 degrees. So that the cosine of pi would be negative 1. And so then the dot product of v and w would just be the negative of the product of these magnitudes. Let's look at another example. Let's find the angle between two vectors v and w. If vector v has components 2, 1, it would point off in this direction. And if vector w had components negative 3, 1, it would point off in this direction. And so we're trying to find this angle theta, the amount of rotation between those two vectors. Well, to do so, we know that the cosine of theta is given by this dot product divided by the magnitudes of v and w. So let's go and find each of these components. First, let's find the dot product of v and w. Remember, the dot product of v and w is the multiplication of your x components plus the multiplication of your y components. So that our dot product is negative 5. We also need to have the magnitudes of each of our vectors. So let's go find first the magnitude of v. And we know the magnitude of v is the square root of the components squared. So for v, that would be 2 squared. And 1 squared would give us square root of 5. And the magnitude of w. That would be the square root of its component squared. It would be negative 3 squared plus 1 squared would be the square root of 10. So that we have the cosine of theta would have to be that dot product, negative 5, divided by the product of those magnitudes. which if you grab your calculator, this that comes out being cosine of theta is about negative 0 0.707. So that theta would be the inverse cosine of negative 0 0.707. And if you're in degree mode on your calculator, that would give you 135 degrees so that we know that there's a 135 degree rotation between those two vectors. Now let's look at the orthogonal projection of a vector v onto w. It is another vector denoted proj of v onto w. Note that the vector you're getting projected onto is the one that's the subscript. Well, it's going to be another vector that gives the component of v in the direction of w. Now we saw earlier in this video that if there's an angle between v and w, that the length of that component of v in the direction of w can be represented by the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. But this just gives the length of that component of v. So to create our projection vector, we're going to multiply this length times a unit vector that goes in the right direction, that goes in the same direction as w. It is common to sometimes rewrite this formula involving just v and w, so you don't have to go find this angle theta. And so to do so, we observe that this unit vector w can be rewritten as w divided by its magnitude. And so we'll put the magnitude below the v cosine of theta. Leave the regular w vector off to the side. Now, multiplying the top and the bottom by another magnitude of w gives us this expression. 
notice that the top, by definition, is the dot product of V and W. And so this gives us a shorter formula for finding the projection of V onto W. Let's look at an example. Consider the two vectors V and W here. Let's find the projection of V onto W. To do so, we're going to need to find this dot product and this magnitude. Let's find the dot product first, V dot W. Now remember how we find our dot product is, this is the multiplication of your x components added to the multiplication of your y components, which gives us a 5. And let's also go find our magnitude of w that we're going to need. Now the magnitude of W, you remember, is found by looking at the square root of your X components squared plus your Y components squared. And so for ours, our X component is 3 and our Y component is 1. So this gives us a square root of 10. So to find our projection vector, this is going to be our dot product of V and W, which we know is 5 divided by the magnitude squared. Now if our magnitude is square root of 10 and we square it, we just get 10. And now we're going to multiply this by w, the vector 3, 1. Of course you notice that 5 tenths right here is really 1 half, and so if we distribute that 1 half into our vector, we get the vector 3 halves and 1 half. And this is our projection of V onto W. Notice that it is parallel to W, but it's a little bit shorter. Well, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.